Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, we're going to do the cover of the French Journal. I've already actually got a cover made off to the side. I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how I constructed it. I used a 12 by 9 uh, manila envelope and pulled off a little metal piece and glued that down. Uh, I just used the leftover remnant of part of the material that I had. So I didn't have enough for the usual seam allowance because I usually have about an inch, half an inch on each side, but that's not a matter. I've got this piece of batting here that I've cut down, and it may be a little bit longer, but that's okay. I can always trim that up if I need to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. And I will sew around it once it's dry. Uh, but I won't do that on camera or anything because it'll take a few minutes to dry. Uh, I don't have the signature sewed in yet to the other journal because uh, I'm still waiting on uh, Kyung to send me the, her part of the French ephemera. Uh, but I do have some other uh, pages. I've got a ledger, antique ledger from uh, Lorna at uh, Taylor Made Journals. And I also have her French ephemera kit um, as well, uh, which is basically like a French a ledger pages and stuff. And then um, these came from uh, Janie B. Journals from her large uh, bundle kit that has like 500 pages. There's a few uh, French pages. That I thought would go perfectly because of the colors and whatnot. Um, but this is what some of the pages look like from, you know, just French ephemera from Lorna's kits. Uh, and I got some tea dyed paper in here, but, and it's just going to be a one signature journal. And uh, the pages are actually smaller than 8.5 by 11 because my printer does not print neither one of them print borderless so I just have to you know fit it to the page and then go so it's actually going to be a little bit shorter um but that's okay because that means that I can sew whatever I want to so no uh you know put whatever I want to into the journal yeah let me trim that off because So that doesn't hang over the page. There we go. Mm. Looks like we might have to do a little hair bit of trimming on this side. Like that's okay. Uh, right. That's perfectly fine. Maybe just a hair more on this side. I'm not really sure where this batting came from. Uh, you could uh, use your batting on both sides if you wanted to. I just put it on the inside. And I've got another uh, panel here, and it's a little bit shorter on the, just up on the corner, but I'm not worried about that because this will be folded over, so it'll cover that up. Um, I was just using the scraps of what I had left. I do still have uh, a few, uh, just a little bit of the material left over, so I can use them for like a fabric flips or like a small journal or something like that Ugh. my fabric my three in one is getting gloopy right there okay 
Come out. Okay. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect because um, it's going to be sewn around anyway. Mm, looks like I may have gotten that a little too long too. Yeah. On the one side. It's not a problem. I can trim it off. Probably could uh, trim that off a little better than what I did. Worked better if I had my fabric scissors, but it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Okay, now. Um, rather than pockets on the other one, I just did a belly band because I had, you know, remnants left of where I cut off the fabric. So I thought, okay, that's perfect. I'll just do a a belly band. Because it's going to get sewn anyway. Okay. There we go. this part down this part down. Put that right there and it doesn't have to be perfect again like I said um because we're gonna sew around it anyway just grab some and we're also going to put corners on them so Okay. So we have a belly band, so I think 
Then we have something like this on the front and then the inside and then we'll have the corners. Now here, because I had the seam allowance, I was able to go all the way around with it when I sewed, but it turned out quite lovely and I sewed the um, belly band on in the middle. So, as you can tell, and put book corners on when everything dried. Now, um, as I said, I've got other, other, right now it's 18 pages in here, and as you can see, it can hold, you know, quite a few more. So I'm hoping to at least do six more pages, uh, possibly 12, uh, with more, like, tea dye or something. Uh, but this journal, I thought, you know, I could do another French journal, or, um, you know, once this is all... As you can see, it'll have the belly band too, but I'll go all the way around it too, so it'll look better. And then I might cover the sides with uh, some lace or something for something different on that one. Uh, I could do another French journal with it, or I could use it for a different journal, which I might do because I've got a... A uh, poppy journal that I'd like to do that has uh, pages from the Edith Holden uh, printables, the you know CD, DVD thing or whatever it is. Uh, with that and some uh, pages from that kit that had poppies on them from the Janie B Journals kit with the you know 500 pages. Uh, this was one of the French ephemera pages from her. Which I've got backed on ledger paper. Um, but it didn't quite go with with the journal. Um, but I thought it would make great ephemera. So I just cut it down. Kind of used it like a master board. And just kind of cut them down. I thought I could decorate them. And uh, maybe add some red and to where they would go into the journal then. Uh, let's see what, oh, I wanted to show you, I've got the clusters done. I uh, backed them onto some, um, weird looking burlap stuff and then some, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a calico or, uh, muslin. Uh, but I thought they turned out pretty good. Uh, you know, they're all different. Uh, that goes this way. Um, and then I could add, well, that goes that way, uh, you know, like, cause I could add it into the journal too, and that one, and that one, oop, is that up to that, yeah, there we go, right side up, that one, that one really doesn't have a direction. But I thought they turned out pretty good. Because um, then I could, you know, add more stuff to them if I wanted to. Uh, ink around them a little bit if I wanted to. That's upside down. If I wanted to. Uh, like that one would be pretty. Maybe add words. Yeah, so we got quite a few out of there, out of those uh, snippets. Yeah, but I thought, you know, they, they came out really good. Uh, and I just got to find a place to put them. So I don't uh, lose them or anything. Oh, and excitingly, I finally got my little bitty, it's a baby, doily dye to work. It doesn't work through my big shot. I couldn't get the right sandwich. But 
they work perfectly perfectly through my little sidekick so I was, I was really excited about that because I thought oh no you know I got this die and I'm not gonna be able to use it um because sometimes you just want a small little piece of doily or something and rather than tearing up a huge one I could just cut one out of um some paper that way I know for sure it'll match whatever I'm working on and um yeah I finally got it to work so I was pretty pretty excited about that one that die came the die set came off of Amazon uh I believe it was four or five dollars uh for the four little bitty little bitty dies uh, I'm thinking like 4.99 or something like that on sale um, so once this dries, then I'll go around it with a sewing machine. And now that's kind of put together. Whee! Uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, when it, once it's been sewn around. So I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so... It has been sewn around. You can't really tell, but there it is on the inside. And I just zigzagged. And then I zigzagged down the middle uh, for some extra stability, of course, on the belly band. So I knew it wouldn't wouldn't come up. Uh, now, on this one, the belly band was done separate. Um, it wasn't glued in first and then sewn all the way around. I had sewn around all that first. And then put the belly band in. But either way. Either way works. And um. So yeah. And now as you can see like this one. They don't. The edges aren't finished. But I can always go around with uh. Some different material. Or lace or something. To cover that up. Uh, like I said I was just using up what I had. So the edges are kind of rough on there. Whereas on this one. It isn't. Um, but yeah, I can cover that up and then um, go around, well, like put book corners on it if I want to. I don't have any more book corners like these, but I do have uh, ones that look like this and some silver ones that look like that. And, uh, these that just glue on to the corner that can be used. So, uh, there is that for a different, different look. And the thread that I use actually is a red thread and a black thread. Um, so, anyway. But yeah, uh, but yeah, now I have another journal cover ready to go for a different project, so there it is. Uh, now we will continue on with, you know, decorating and stuff up as soon as I get the other digitals, uh, because there is some ephemera, I believe, that goes with the kit, that, the French kit that Kyung has, and that's what I'm waiting on, um, so that I can do some tags and journal cards and, you know, decorating of that nature. I uh, don't know how well the colors match, but, you know, as long as they're pretty neutral, that's okay. Uh, and I haven't decided yet if I want to do, um, like, walnut stain ink, or if I want to go around with candy apple or fired brick. Uh, because fired brick has a little bit more like the burgundy color. Ooh, aged mahogany might be a good choice, too. Uh, Alright then, so uh, when we come back, we'll start working on uh, decorating it and, you know, putting it all together. I haven't sewn anything in yet, um, but I'll kind of walk you through the process because I can always use this journal as an example of, you know, what types of signatures and stuff to put in. Alrighty guys, so I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you guys back here really soon. Bye!